So, nice. anyway, let's move on to news here on May 23rd. We have a lots of news. Oh, this um, is a big one. Yeah, I, th- I thought this was very interesting. Again, you listen to Darren Michael. We talk about music uh, each week, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Tell your friends, wake the neighbors, we're the best show on the radio station. The Foo Fighters named a new drummer. It's been a year since their uh, drummer, Taylor Hawkins, passed away. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because they selected a session musician by the name of Josh Freeze, a guy I've never heard of, but he has played for, in sessions, Guns N' Roses, A Perfect Circle, Puddle of Mud, Nine Inch Nails, Paramore, The Replacement, Weezer, Sting, and The Vandals, and a whole bunch of more bands. So some way, somehow, after a couple of decades of being a session musician, Josh Freeze has been selected as the Foo Fighters' new drummer. And you imagine landing that gig? I mean, you'd go from uh, playing inside the studio to playing in front of 100,000 people. I, that sounds like a good two years of life. Yeah, man. you know, and I think this is a trend. The ZZ Top picked, uh, their uh, bass player died two years ago, and they selected their guitar tech to be oh, yeah. their like 30 year long guitar tech. To that's be a little music. different. That was that's, a that is tech. That is, I, I know, that's but that's different. That I can understand because they've had a relationship with them. Mm. This is a session drummer that probably has only been a, around them so many times. But regardless of that, I, mean, I love the idea of these bands picking quote unquote a no name. No mean doesn't, mm-hmm. they don't have a talent. They're just not known to the. Sure. To the public, Not because famous. usually the move is to go get some famous sure. person sure. who was in a previous band that broke up or something sure. like that, doesn't have a job. Mm-hmm. But I think that's awesome. What a dream come true for uh, for this guy, Josh Freese, to be a and session there's, musician. And there's nobody better than session drummers. Se- se- that's session, what I've heard my whole life, oh, is that session, session musicians, musicians are, are the best. Unbelievable. They're, they're the best. So that's, they're they're the reason. most technical, probably. They are the most technical. They, are, yeah. they know how to do it and what to do. And I imagine they honestly got along. So there's a million people that probably could play the Foo Fighters. No no offense sure. given here. Uh, it's not the most technical uh, you know, style of drumming. But you know what? With those guys being... They have to have got along. The they Foo have Fighters to, being be, those guys... Hang yeah, all those guys being in their mid to late 50s. Yeah. I bet they pick somebody intentionally yeah. that is going to be happy. Yeah. And not cause problems, yeah. Yeah. and why would you? Why and not go, go make have a dinners dream come with true? go have dinners with the gang and just do be be simple, be chill. I, I, they makes, picked a no problem person, I'm sure. It makes total sense to me. Good so, for them and good for you, Josh. So we're in the that's news to me section here on the Darren Market Show, ninety four point three FM. I'm working on my FM radio voice. How do you feel it's going? Ninety four point three FM, Wimberley. As long as you're not working on your telemundo, I'm always voice. congested, so I don't I don't have the best radio voice. So. Uh, okay, I mentioned earlier I'm a professional marketer. I thought this uh, next news item is wonderful for the intersection of music and marketing, which I I have been interested in my whole life, even as a kid before I became a professional. But um, Lewis Capaldi, who's a, the Michael calls him the Scottish Adele, and I guess a lot of people do. Yeah, he's a younger, uh, you know, he's 25, 26 year old singer from he's Scotland. Yeah, he's a kid. So he has had an agreement with. Peloton. Oh my gosh. And he was in the Peloton Studios in England this last week. But they are playing uh Lewis Capaldi music yes. during their Peloton <laughs> sessions. And so, when I told you he's the type of music that like I want to cry but jog at the same time too. Yeah, well they <laughs> so you know the press release says that they're bringing his signature humor or in humor and energy yeah. helping those to, part- to participate to sweat to full playlist of his favorite pop hits that he uh that curates awesome. with but i think this is a wonderful idea because mm-hmm. i know that peloton's market share and sales have gone down yeah. over the last couple of Since years COVID. uh they've reached saturation so why not bring celebrities into yeah. the mix and particularly music since uh, I assume they they ride to a, a lot of music. I, I mean, that's Peloton. it's definitely half of all working out. But Louis Capaldi, because Louis Capaldi isn't the most fit dude ever. Uh, no, so, he's not. So he's perfect. You know, actually, I, mean, I think. Yeah, maybe it's part of him, like getting and and like you know trying to take care of his health while he's doing his music and stuff. And else, I think it's I, I find this awesome and funny. If you know Louis Capaldi, if you don't right. know Louis Capaldi, it's not as funny. But the dude like walks around in his underwear, being you know pretty overweight inside his music videos, and, and like embrace braces it and he's like dude i'm just living my life out here calm down so like i can see him in his underwear doing the <laughs> doing the peloton yes. well, if anyone would it music, be him. sweating and crying which is awesome lewis you're awesome so if you don't know lewis he's i, I 
I find him to be one of the more authentic and accessible celebrities. Oh, there is I feel like so when, when you see him interviewed, and if you met him in real life, there wouldn't be much of a difference. I think uh, he'd be the exact same person. Yeah, me too. Um, so anyway, congrats to Lewis on yeah, the Peloton. I, there's I, no, I'm curious I, to see how see how it goes. It doesn't. There's like no front in Lewis. Lewis is Lewis. Yeah, which is which is hard to come by, especially in a celebrity. It's like you know Taylor Swift. She's so authentic. <laughs> oh, good I was Lord. just curious to see Darren's comment. Uh, I want to do thoughts. an entire session just on Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> speaking of Taylor Swift, someone, somebody similar growing up right behind her, Olivia Rodrigo, who I believe is 19 or 20 now. She's a former Disney star. She is close and promising daily on Instagram that uh, to her fans that her second album is getting very close. She mm. had uh, her debut album, 2021. It was called Sour. Uh, and her, she, she wants to promise the world that her second album is coming close. Micah, I bring this up because I want you to know I have officially filed this under I don't care <laughs> folder. It's too bad for you. Olivia's great, man. I think <laughs> she's doing a wonderful job uh, as really the up-and-coming uh, Ariana Grande or next huge pop star. She's it. Uh, so I thought she's done a wonderful job. I like a lot of her music. Um, I do care about her next album. I'll be curious to listen to it. And we'll watch it on our damn show for sure. On our yes, YouTube I will. Yeah, and Micah's referencing a YouTube channel that we have on YouTube. Go the damn show, D A M for Darren and Micah. I hope you check us out there. Okay, on to a news item I do care about. And by the way, I hope Olivia rallies. She and, crushes uh, it. She's going to crush it. Comes back. You know, Gail, Everyone speaking of the- which, Gail has a, her third album out really? at age 19. I've listened to it. It's amazing. Everyone is behind Olivia. Her album's <laughs> going to crush. Uh, Bruno Mars. I was shocked to read this headline. Bruno Mars is set to release his first new solo album in the seven years it's not that he's got a solo album out i just didn't realize seven years have gone by since his album because he's been busy with his duo silk sonic but he's close to competing the new record uh and he's going to talks with live nation which is a, a music concert promoting company but anyway to map out the details to where the album and a tour will come out in 2025 but bruno mars seven years since the new album uh, solo album. How, how do you feel about Bruno Mars? Just I curious. think he's amazing. Me I too. I think he's yeah. he's he Bruno Mars. He is one of these folks that is so polished in the way he yeah. looks, the way he sings, the way he plays multiple. So um, talented that it actually kind of works against him <laughs> a little bit because. I, I don't see any outward signs of struggle from yeah. Bruno, and I think people effortless. take him from granted by how talented yeah. he is. I mean, I think Bruno is the modern-day prince. I, I mean, he's amazing. He's awesome. Just the way they both were so authentic, the way they both were so present to their instruments and their life and their music. He's always so happy, too, yes. and he's like genuinely happy. Reminds me a little bit of Stevie Wonder. Like he's got that same just exuberance of life, and he just exudes like what fun and and joy and happiness. You know, I'm really excited about his next release. I think he's unbelievably talented, and I, I think you're right. I don't know if people don't take him for granted, but I think a lot of times we we compare like Bruno to another pop star, and it's like, eh, like Bruno is really down the rabbit hole of work ethic around many many things in music it's like when you go back to prince and then people see prince play a solo and you're like whoa the amount of work that it takes to play a solo like prince plays and then go play bass and then go play drums and then go sing and then go do a performance is unbelievable this means this person doesn't sit around and party (laughs) this person works on their craft every day for 10 to 12 or 14 hours right. and then every once in a while they go out with their friends and, and stuff and they go on tour like yeah. this is a person and he that works just loves... he works equally on his image and Correct. what he says he speaks in very short sound bites Correct. he's very polished you know he works with mark ronson the producer who also works with lady gaga and a whole bunch of yeah, other... mark is awesome uh, yeah and a bunch I, yeah i i wish bruno was a little more like lewis in the sense that when he's interviewed, he keeps he's got it simple. Some sweet, he keeps it simple. Yeah, he's got some really cute, clever answer for yeah. everything, yeah. which means he's worked on that image too, yeah. and and that image works. But I like it. It keeps me. It keeps the the. He's the wolf a true at entertainer. Bay. In addition he's to a mu- top, of I the usually thread. put people in entertainer or musician category. He's both. Both. 
And that's it's so hard. Yeah. It, like, it takes a lot of work to be an entertainer, too. And I want that to be marked. Uh, I, to be I think actor, oftentimes it's harder. I think so as well. I think, or it well, takes more energy. It, it takes, takes more, more energy. There we go. It takes more yeah. energy. And then the time. So anyways, good for you, Bruno. I am pumped for your new album. I'll be very excited, very excited to listen to it. Silk Sonic, if y'all haven't listened to Bruno's side project, Silk Sonic uh, with Anderson Pack is awesome. It's really, really great. So I'll be excited for his new album. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of cool in, uh, news items. At least I find them interesting. Hope you do too. Here on the Darren and Micah show on ninety four point three. Found a way to FM. slide it in, did you? Yes. Darren? Found a way to slide it. We're required it in. to mention the station uh, every day, every at, week, uh, once a certain a week. amount of times, which I find funny. Like people accidentally dial into the station <laughs> and don't know what you're listening to. I don't but, think Darren does this consciously either. He just subconsciously <laughs> always finds info about when this I'm person. driving around. When I'm driving around the car and somebody calls me and I'm like, "This is Darren and ninety four point three <laughs> FM Wimberley Valley Radio." I'm actually commenting on the next item that you're about to talk oh, about. Yeah, no. Well, I Watch, love it. I love it. Lead in. So this, this well, this you, is the person as a performer. Yep. I'm very curious how you feel about this, but Miley Cyrus. Oh, here we. That's what I was. <laughs> has ruled out doing any more arena tours. Because she finds them isolating, meaning that when she plays to a huge crowd, she doesn't feel the connections to her fans at large-scale concerts compared to the smaller, more intimate venues. And so moving forward, her live performances are going to be a series of mini tours, M-I-N-I, mini tours with smaller smaller places and in regional type places mike as a performer yourself and just a music fan how do you feel about this yeah, idea i regret to inform the public that i've not yet played in front of eighty four thousand people <laughs> so i kind of can't relate however i've heard a lot of artists talk about this yeah that they don't feel connected at the bigger auditoriums and the stages right and they kind of run from show how to show you, it's you? really it's really it's really intense and it takes a lot of time but i've heard there are other people that do like stevie wonder talks about how connected he feels um I, who was the other one that really really does it oh yeah queen um there's some old talks with him where you know he really got the whole crowd going at his shows and things like that so I think this is an artist to artist person. I think a lot of artists struggle with this. I think I'm pumped about it because I would not go see Miley at Circuit of the Americas, but I'd see her at a 5,000 person stadium. Right. That'd be awesome. In fact, I'd pay double the ticket cost. I've said this for a long time. I would pay an exorbitant amount of money. I'd pay 750 bucks to see John Mayer at ACL Live. What? But I wouldn't spend 350 to see him at the Circuit of the Americas. Yeah. I, I, would, I understand. I that. would spend so that he could come play. A smaller circuit, I'll pay double the money because I want to get, I want to connect, I want to feel that thing because I don't connect at big ones as well. When I go to Circuit of the Americas and things, I don't. However, we talked about last week, man. If, like if she played at uh, the five thousand person amphitheater in Austin outdoors, that'd be right. awesome, right? You know, that'd be awesome. But I don't think it's big enough for her. I think she's well, going to go. Tickets will be twelve thousand feet. Well, I don't have it on our run sheet here to talk about, but I do have. Uh, to my uh, immediate availability, the top five attended concerts of all time. Mm. And I'm going to do put a pop quiz on there. Sorry, I forgot mm. to tell you. No, no. Uh, I, okay, well, I I don't know how I feel about this because if you want to see your favorite artists and your only chance is to go and sit in the nosebleeds in these larger concerts, then you're you're robbed about this. But I completely understand the energy from a smaller crowd. Yeah. I am worried about ticket prices being shot up. Yeah. Uh on that. I'll um, pay it. I'll pay it, Miley. Well maybe maybe Yeah, I'll. I would like to I've never seen it in person. I would like to I would like to see her, but I, I just I know it's What's gonna be What's the top exhausting. amount that you would spend on a ticket? I don't know, man. It depends on where Let's the say, seat is. How, being, you have great seats. Being so be, physically close is really important to me if I pay top dollar. I, oh, 100%. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about like what's the most you would spend on an awesome, let's say even a VIP ticket. So you like oh, you get yeah. your own elevator, you get access, and you get to be like right next to the stage or, or even backstage like above it. Like what's the most that you would spend? And let's pick MCR. So My Chemical Romance. <sighs> well, I, yeah, I did pay a lot of money pay? for My Chemical Romance. Mm-hmm. I know what you're um, that um, But what's the most? Yeah, because Ticketmaster's the devil uh-huh uh miley cyrus i uh, not man, miley I really, not miley just oh. what's the most i mean i don't know the I, number I, one thing you'd ever want to watch um like i think I mean, I reincarnated you know. van halen maybe but that's what i mean so I, let's I, say yeah I, see, I would i would go i would the bottom end for vip would probably be 350 a ticket if it was somebody really truly 350 is like nosebleeds these days you can't even well get, you can't even get into a i don't know i don't know if that's true but i would say <laughs> 500 
it's probably to the top. Yeah, to top, I know you yeah. spent double, almost triple that to go to my chemical. I runs. did. Well, they didn't so play. You're already in, they a liar. Didn't, they didn't. Yeah, but you're asking moving forward. I now regret because uh, they added dates, and I went and saw them in San Antonio for a, a fraction of the cost yeah. um, of that. So. I don't. I don't know the answer. I try not to go see these big shows because I want to spend my money on other things. Yeah, I think twelve fifty uh, to fifteen hundred is my max. God, to I go just see, can't like, imagine, dude. And you take your wife like, and it's three grand to see like I mean, David. You could, go, you could go to a great vacation for that. I yeah, mean, but that is a great. Like I would go to Dallas for a night and right. watch David Gilmore. Yeah, like if oh, I could well, see David Gilmore. You VIP, talk about those guys are. And then they one give you the like that's different. They give you like well, that's what I mean. I'm saying the yeah. most expensive. Most of the times, I don't like to spend more than five hundred combined. Would be my like. You know that's good. I might spend three fifty a piece for a ticket on once a year. Once a year, I'll spend three fifty yeah. for a ticket. But I, like, I, man, I, if you're going to concerts these days, like two hundred's like nosebleeds. I know it's it's crazy. It's, it's, it's awful. It truly is awful. Yeah. And luckily for me, it's not by design. It's just by how life has unfolded. A lot of the artists who I enjoy going and seeing in person 100%. are low artists in terms of fame. I mean, I just went or, to or, yeah. watch Tedeschi Trucks. Yeah, right downtown. It was but only, they're not going to be super expensive. It was only a hundred a ticket. Right. We were tenth row. We were yeah. tenth row, right in front well, of it. And I, I'll pay that every day of the week because I want to support them in that cause. I, I uh, in June, late June, I'm seeing an artist from Australia who only comes here once a year. I'm seeing her Friday night in Austin. Thirty bucks. No, it's Friday night. How much is she charging you? Oh, $20. 20 bucks, yeah. Yeah, and then the next night she plays in Dallas. Which is like, I think artists should get paid more. I'm so down with it. It's <laughs> Ticketmaster and those prices that are, that are charging a ton they of don't even, the, the place she's playing nah, at, they don't even in. use Ticketmaster. Yeah, that's why they can charge 20 bucks. That's right. So, uh, And then the very next day, she's playing in Dallas at a bar I used to go to 30 years ago when I lived there. And I am driving up there, getting a hotel right down the street and nice. seeing her second night like a, a groupie. And, uh, it's awesome. but yeah, but I'm spending money on the gas and the hotel and all these things. But when you, when you have somebody you really, she has a brand new album out. When you have somebody you really care about and she lives 18,000 miles away in yeah. Australia, you got to do what you got to do to go I'm see I'm all you. about spending money on watching yeah. uh, shows. Some of our favorite moments are travel and concerts, travel and concerts. Those yeah. are our, those are the things that make me happy. Yeah, but I'm in my fifties, man. And I'm going to go see a 30 year old singer. It's awesome. And deep Ellen of Dallas. I love Dallas. it. I love I'm going to be the oldest dude there. I love it. I hope everybody <laughs> takes a note from you and keeps doing it because yeah. it's a way to live life. Dan, we've only got three minutes left. Okay, we've cool. Got three minutes So left. this is May 23rd. Born on this day. There is no birthdays to celebrate um, for the station, which is unusual, but we have some upcoming birthdays. Rosemary Clooney was born in 1928. Micah, do you know who Rosemary Clooney is? Uh, George Clooney's wife? It... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's known for dating people much younger than he is. Uh, she is related to George Clooney. It's ah. not his wife. It is his aunt. Okay. So she was a famous singer um, from way back in the day, Rosemary okay. Clooney, um, big in the 50s and uh, the 60s, and you know, sang in that style back then. Yeah, so Rosemary, you know, she long since passed, but uh, George Clooney's uh, aunt was okay. there, and he grew up. With Frank Sinatra coming over at his house as a kid and all mm. this, and thought Dean Martin, all this. Oh, um, a little more newer, early. born on this day, May 23rd, back in 1974, Jewel, the singer, the Canadian singer, oh, Jewel, yeah. which I have no idea what happened to her. Same. Um, she fell off the face of the planet. She was good. She, huh? was, good. she was good. She's great. Yeah. I just, she, I mean, when was the last time you heard new music Nothing. from her, is what I'm saying. She you knows she married a famous cowboy, um, mm. like the, like, the Michael Jordan of rodeo. Really? Speaking of rodeos, yeah. Uh, God, he's from Fort Worth. I can't think of his name. He's retired now. But anyway, um, and then in this day, 23 years ago, if you want to feel old, uh, Eminem released his wow. third album, which what was fast. the Marshall Mathers LP, which is probably his most financially successful album, I would say. Well, there was and, some uh, shady please stand up. Yeah, that's the one. Back in 2000, 23 years ago, which is weird for me that that That's is fast. his third I agree. album uh I, I think of him more of a 2000 artist but it's it, crazy that means that he came out in the mid to late 90s sounds uh, right 
which is, you know, Eminem is now 50. So yeah. that was on this day in 2023. Mike, how much time do we have left? We have a minute and 12 seconds. Awesome. What would you like to talk about in a minute and 12 seconds? I don't know. You had a quiz? Can I, I do it I did have a, a quiz. But, 60 seconds. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to be too long. So it is just off the top of your head, name the top five fest music festivals by attendance. Can you mm. name any of the five? Uh, Coachella? Coachella is not there. ACL? ACL is not there. Oh, I got nothing. Keep going. Okay, number go. five is Isle of Wight Festival, 1970. 700,000 people uh, were there. And they had oh, the this Who, is in Joni I Mitchell. I thought you were saying today. Sorry. No, no, no. Keep Miles going. Davis. Okay. Just Top just five just ever. Up. So Isle of Wight. I don't even know where that is. 770 people? 700,000. So Can you name any other now that you know that ever in the history of ever? No, Top probably five not. Festival. I mean, Woodstock, but that wouldn't have that much. Live 8, which was in Philadelphia. Eight. I was going to say Live 8 because Pink no, Floyd live, played there. N- live 8, number 8. Yep. Live 8. Yep. I, I saw the original Live 8 in 1985. Yep. But anyway, yep. they had 1 million people show up. Wow. Check this out. Number three, the Rolling Stones and Coca Cabana Beach, 1.5 million. Rio wow. de Janeiro. Wow. Um, in 2006, wow. 1.5 million. I can't even fathom that. Keep going. We got 30 seconds. Here's a, all right. Monsters of Rock in Moscow, 1991, 1. 1.6 million. And number one, a dude I never heard of, Jean Michel Jarre. He's French. Jean Michel. Jarre, Moscow, 1997. Check this out. 3.5 million people went and saw him. He's a French master of ethereal synth pop. That's awesome. Everybody, thank you very much for joining us uh, on this day, 94.3 KWVH, Wimbledon Valley Radio. This is the Darren and Micah Show. Darren dropping the knowledge on those big events, those live concerts. We'll catch you on the next one. Till then, later.